Can we make it so our opponent can never again cast a spell or attack with a creature with the combo of Isochron, Scepter, and Orms chant? That's what we're going to find out today. So here is our Scepter Chant deck for Modern, and I am super hyped for this one because, and I think I've told this story before, but when I first started playing Magic, like 20 years ago, the first deck I ever built was this super casual charge counter deck built out of original Mirrored in Block cards, and I was playing against this friend who was a lot better than Magic at me and was like a much more competitive player, and he had full-on extended tier Scepter Chant lock, so I spent weeks bashing my casual charge counter deck into this Scepter Chant prison deck and losing and losing and losing and getting more and more frustrated until that wonderful day happened when I finally beat my friend and that's what got me addicted to magic was finally beating this deck and then my friend of course after I finally beat scepter champ pulled out stasis and the process started over but I'm really excited to see if this deck the deck that essentially taught me to play magic and love magic can actually work in modern in 2024 so what's the plan of our deck we're built around orms champ orms champ one man instant it makes your uh, target player not cast spells for a turn, but you can kick it for one more white mana. And if you do, creatures can't attack this turn. So essentially for two white mana, you cast this, your opponent can't cast spells or attack for the turn. So as a one shot, Orm's Chant is kind of fine. It's kind of like a weird janky time walk, but the real power of Orm's Chant is putting under Isochron Scepter. Isochron Scepter, when it ETBs, you can imprint an instant mana value two or less on it. And then you tap it and pay two mana and copy the imprinted spell. So the idea is we get a Orm's under the Isochron Scepter, and on our opponent's upkeep every single turn, we just tap the Scepter, pay the two mana, cast the Orm's Chant, make it so our opponent can't cast spells, and if our opponent has any creatures, we can pay one more mana for the kicker and make it so our opponent can't attack. So essentially, this would lock our opponent out of ever casting spells at sorcery speed. They can still cast incense, but we have plans for that too. We also have Counter Spell, which is the one other thing we can put under Isochron Scepter. Normally, we don't do that, but there are cases where you put it under there and have like this weird infinite counter spell. So I mentioned before, if we just have Worms Chant Isochron Scepter, we essentially lock our opponent out of playing anything at sorcery speed. So they can't just play a creature or an artifact or whatever. The problem is they can still play things at instant speed, including things that'll blow up the Isochron Scepter and get out from under the lock. So we need a way to strengthen the lock. So to strengthen the lock, we have Teferi Time Raveler. So Teferi has a static ability that says your opponents can only cast spells when they can cast a sorcery. So you probably see where this is going. If we Scepter chant on our opponent's upkeep. They can't cast spells at sorcery speed. And then we have Teferi that says they can only cast spells at sorcery speed, which essentially means our opponent just can't cast spells forever for the rest of the game. So you're probably thinking, okay, that's the lock, right? Isochron Scepter with an Orm's chant. Activate it on your opponent's upkeep with a Teferi. Your opponent is essentially locked out of the game. They can never attack. They can never cast spells. You just win at your leisure. But that's not totally true because we're playing in 2024. And in 2024, there's a lot of weird ways of interacting in magic. So the one thing that breaks out of the Teferi Scepter Chant lock is a Channel Land, something like Besaju to blow up the Isochron Scepter, something like Atwara to bounce the Isochron Scepter. Those can still be channeled even through a Orm's Chant, even through a Teferi, because you're not technically casting a spell. So to really fully hard lock our opponent, the last piece of the puzzle is Card the Great Creator to get Pithing Needle or Disruptor Flute from our sideboard to name Besaju or Atwara, depending on the matchup. If our opponent doesn't have either of those, then the Teferi lock is hard enough by itself, but that's the final piece of the puzzle. So that just fully locks our opponent out of the game. And then once our opponent can never cast spells again, can never attack again, we can just win at our leisure. So how do we win at our leisure? The answer here is Elixir of Immortality. We can also get that from our sideboard with a Karn. It's a one mana artifact that you can pay to and tap it. You gain five life and shuffle it and your graveyard into your library. So essentially, once Karn gets Elixir of Immortality, we just can keep shuffling your graveyard into our library and we can never mill out and our opponent they can't do anything so eventually they'll draw their entire deck and lose to drawing on an empty deck so that is the goal of our deck isaac rod scepter with an orm's chant to shut down sorcery speed stuff to fury to shut down non-sorcery speed stuff karn to get pithy needle and disruptor flute to shut down channel lands and then elixir of immortality so we can never mill out if we can assemble all this stuff we just assemble the hardest most hilarious lock in modern we also have the one ring to draw a bunch of cards because it's busted a bunch of removal spells to stay alive mana base pretty typical stuff a bunch
bunch of fetches, some surveillance, some triumphs to reduce the cost on our ley line bindings, some basics, a field of ruin in the sideboard. It's pretty simple. It is literally all Karn stuff outside of Kahir the Orphan Guard, which is kind of a free roll as a companion. So we just got a bunch of artifacts. If we're worried about creatures, we can get ensnaring bridge combos. We can take the stone brain or damping sphere, cursed totem. We can get graveyard hate. We can get big creatures like worm coil cityscape leveler. So that is scepter chant for 2024 modern. That's our deck for today. So let's jump into a league and see, is it possible? And you're a super push, super powerful 2024 Modern Rises 3 Modern format to actually heartlock people out of the game with Scepter Chant. That's what we're going to find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the tokens signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtggoldfishmerch.com. It is Scepter Chant time in Modern. I've been waiting to build and try this deck ever since Orm's Chant was previewed to Modern Horizons 3. I've told this story before, but the way I learned to play Magic was me bashing my super casual brand new player original mirrored and block charge counter deck against a friend that had like tier scepter chant for extended and just losing and losing and losing and getting more and more frustrated till eventually I beat it. And that's what actually got me hooked at playing Magic. And then he brought out his stasis deck. <laughs> uh, this end, this end looks fine. So we don't have Scepter, we don't have Worms Chant, that's fine though. Well, like really, this is a control deck, right? Where it's really a prison deck that looks like a control deck where we're trying to control the game, we're trying to stay alive, and then eventually we set up this essentially unbeatable lock. It takes some work, it's definitely hard mode in 2024 because there's things like Beseju that are just really good against what we're trying to do. But uh, this hand's reasonable enough. I mean, we got some lands, got a counter, maybe have a removal spell once we draw a white card, got a one ring to refuel. See what our opponent's up to. Oh boy, Eldrazi, eh? Devour of Destiny. Well, this should be interesting. On one hand, we don't really have a way to stop an opponent from making a ton of mana. Like, that's that's kind of an issue. On the other hand, I don't think this deck should be able to interact with our lock very well. So if we can actually get the lock down, all right, Eldrazi Temple, it could be very effective against Eldrazi. Well, let's just lead on the Surveil land. Uh, definitely don't need land number, I don't even know at this point, five if you count the Lorien reveal. Oh, opponent, Grove of the Burn Willows. So what would our opponent have to break out of the lock? Beseju potentially. Although Aldrazi, I don't know if it can afford to play many Besejus. Now let's play the Island Pass turn. Leave up our counter spell. Actually, I'm also excited about this because we don't play control decks very much and <laughs> You might not know this about me, but I actually really enjoy playing control. I don't do it because I don't think it makes for good content. So we don't, I don't play control decks very often at all. But when I first started playing like kind of competitively, I love jamming, jamming control decks. One of my, it's like, ah, oh, it's just like such a fun play style. <laughs> Just like trying to find the right answers. You have to think through every move. Like one turn of tapping out your mana at the wrong time means you lose the game. Uh, let's get rid of this. We're not doing anything else. We don't have a counter to hold up. Let's just get rid of this uh, mana rock over there. Play the Marsh Flats. Pass the turn. Ideally, next turn, we can get down the one ring. Start drawing some cards. Opponents also kind of not doing much with their mana. They have five mana for Aldrazi. If they have another soul land, they can play the Devourer next turn. Although the Devourer is not very good against us. Uh, let's just get a Surveil land. Two again on the top of the deck. Are we going to need to Legend rule away our one ring? Yeah, I think we just mill it. I think it'll be fine. Hey, Teferi makes that an easy choice. Teferi's nice because, well, Teferi's in the deck because we need it to make the lock a hard lock, but also a good way to reset the one ring. Uh, well, even more Teferi's. I mean, we're in pretty good shape here, I think. Wow, all right, put on it. And their own one ring, okay. And draws, I don't know why people always draw in response to the protection, but <laughs> sure, sure, that's fine. Well, I mean, I guess we can bounce their one ring with Teferi if we need to. We're going to get to draw a bunch of cards this turn, though. So ooh, there's Karn. That's probably even. Oh, but we miss on lands. That's awkward. So now I got a Lorien revealed. Grab a land. Definitely going to get down the Karn. Karn doesn't die to devour because it only kills colored things. And it's going to shut down this one ring. That's way better than Teferi bouncing, right? Although getting Teferi on the battlefield would be nice. But then that dies to devour. Yeah, let's just play the Karn. 
take down the Karn and grab a... Do we just grab the Scepter? So we have the Orm's Chant. We can get the Scepter. We could start attacking the mana with Liquid Metal Coating, but... <sighs> Yeah, I think we do that first. Let's grab the liquid metal coating first. Next turn, Karn can grab the scepter and set up and set up the lock, I think, hopefully, as long as nothing goes horribly wrong here. We do gotta be aware of Beseju potentially. Why are they not casting the Devourer just to have a body on the battlefield? I guess they want to get more value out of it, but at some point you just gotta play your six six, I think. Oh, opponent might be agreeing. Yeah, I mean, it's annoying not to get removal out of it, but they got to start pressuring us, I think. We have a one ring. They don't. <laughs> so I need a way to pressure this Karn. Not going to do it. You can't just pass. There's no way. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter. We get another Karn Tutor either way, right? Even if they devour. Oh, Kozilek's command. Okay. So we're going to make a bunch of spawn. Well, those spawn are a little scary just because that could let our opponent play something super big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They're getting to the... Cast an Ulamog. They are at the Cast an Ulamog stage of the game. Although I guess the Solitudes are good answers. I guess we could also do... Oh, they're going to spend their spawns? What did they find? Thought not? Oh, through the... Oh my... Oh, goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> through the breach would make us die, most likely. The problem for our opponent is... Um... <laughs> it's their post-combat main <laughs> Oh, oh no, oh no. I mean, so it depends on what they put into play. We might be able to solitude, but either way, it was going to be painful. Yeah, opponent says in the chat, they forgot it was their second main phase. Well, uh, that is a freebie. We might have been okay. It really depends on what they had to put into play, but we might have been okay with the solitudes. Let's draw. Let's tick down Karn. Let's grab the scepter. We got to we gotta set up the lock. Now that we know they're breaching, we could die at any moment. So... We're two turns away from essentially, well, we're three turns away from having the hard, hard lock with Teferi, uh, well, opponent, <laughs> not going to wait and see and scoops it up to the scepter with the chant. And well, we might have dodged a bullet on that one a little bit. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit of bullet dodging with our opponent post combating. So the time to through the breach, either your pre combat main phase or your opponent's end step. Also, one thing I love about this deck is we really don't have to sideboard much because we're a Karn deck, so <laughs> we're going to run it back. I mean, that is upside into downside. Some matchups, it's awkward because we don't have really cards to take out if Supreme Verdict's bad or whatever. Uh, cannot keep the one lander. I mean, this will keep Karn or Supreme Verdict to the bottom. Let's go Karn number two to the bottom. We know that this deck can get draws that just kills you. <laughs> this deck definitely has draws where they just through the breach, put a Emrakul into play, and you just die on like turn three or turn four. This hand doesn't really stomp that very well. Opponent, devour. Exiling some stuff, setting up their draws. Oh, double devour, all right. They should have something good on the top of their deck. Eldrazi Temple, passing. Another Lorien revealed. Well, I mean, we're gonna hit our land drops. That's some amount of good news. Feeling a little slow with this draw though, if our opponent, who can Labyrinth, okay, no, Plays opponent pound another card anyway. Well, playing the land past the turn. I think we just got to do some Lorien rebuilds and uh, make sure we hit our land drops. I mean, we do have a Teferi and two cards, so we're gonna find good things eventually if we're alive. Opponent once again passing. I guess that's good news. I guess the Eldrazi deck also can get off to some slow stars. Like, our opponent has four mana for Eldrazi and just not doing anything with it. And I think we just Cash in the second Lorien Revealed, so we know we can go to Fairy into Karn. It's like a Lorien Revealed, grab a island, go, go to, uh-oh, oh, Kozlex command. All right, that means something big and scary can come next turn. Yeah, gonna make some spawns, gonna scry and draw. Kind of crazy that Kozilek's command is an Eldrazi, so you can Eldrazi's template. It makes it so much stronger. Like, Eldrazi temple got so much better because of Modern Horizons 3. Kind of ridiculously better. Kozilek's command's really good. Like, it's way better than I really conceptualize. It looks expensive, but when you consider that most of the... Ooh, there's a Sumter. When you consider that most of the lands in Eldrazi tap for two mana, um, it's not nearly as bad as it looks. Well... <laughs> It's Teferi or nothing, so we're going to play the Teferi. I don't even know what we do with it. Tick it up, I guess? If we take down to target a spawn, they can just sack it and fizzle it anyway. Sacking their spawns in response? Just kidding. Okay. 
mean, take it down and just draw. Maybe that's better. Take it down, no target draw. I guess that's fine. Meticulous Archive. There is a world where we like instant speed Supreme Verdict next turn, which could be decent. Another Odrazi Temple. So much mana. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can Ulamog here. I mean, technically we beat an Ulamog, I think, with Supreme Verdict. Devourer of Destiny. Okay, there goes the Teferi. Good thing we drew with it. <laughs> Found it passes. We know they have... Oh, that's... Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, do we just kind of YOLO this? I think we do. I mean, they could have an answer. We have no protection. The Teferi's dead. Found it. Once again, pump fakes, spawn sagging. Uh... Ice Crown Scepter, Exile the Worms Chant. So we can't kick it this turn because we do have to pay the extra one for the kicker. So we can keep our opponent from casting spells, but we are going to take a hit here. But oh, if they can through the breach upkeep, then we're then we're dead. Oh, Disruptor Flute. OK, well, that adds another layer to the puzzle. So Disruptor Flute shuts down the Scepter. So now we need to answer the Disruptor Flute. Good news is we have the combo set up if we can answer the Disruptor Flute. And we do have like Leyline Binding, Prismatic Ending. So we do have things to get it off the battlefield opponent. Talisman. I mean, we also have this Wrath we can spend at some point. Question's going to be, what do we do with... Well, there's a Solitude that we can't really cast yet. Well, let's Meticulous Archive. Do a little surveilling to the graveyard. So we play Karn Tutor and it dies. I mean, we're not doing anything else, so I guess we have to. There's a world where we can like turn the Disruptor Flute into a creature and wrath it. Not a great world, but it could happen. Uh, we might just need to take the bridge. Do we just take the bridge and try to hide behind it for a couple turns while we'd look for an answer? How about not breaching us this turn? If we get breached this turn, we die. Gets back the Devourer. I mean, that's fine. Another Devourer doesn't really matter here. Down to eight. Actually, you're gonna kill the Karn. That makes more sense. Gonna kill the Karn. We get to stay at 14. I mean, if the bridge sticks, we don't have to worry about Breach. That should buy us a decent amount of time. Would still love to just draw an answer to Disruptor Flu. That just probably wins us the game. We probably just have to bridge here, right? Playing the land. I'm just so worried about getting breached. The other option would be like leave up solitude, flash it in, eat something. But our opponent has enough mana that they can just breach us if they draw it and we die. So I think we need to hide behind the bridge for a bit. Do a little ensnaring of these Eldrazi. Well, pass the turn. Come on, Leyline Binding, Prismatic Ending. Actually, Prismatic Ending's better, right? Because they can devour a binding. Oh no, is this another huge Kozilix command? Kozilix command's so good. It's so good, pawn it. Yeah, goes like command. Gonna do some scrying and some spawning. I would not be surprised if they have the breach and a finisher at this point. Like, Kozilek's command's pretty good at finding that, right? Scry six, draw a card. Probably gonna find you what you need. But what our opponent needs now is an answer to the bridge. Until they answer the bridge, they can't really kill us. So they, I guess that's the equation right now. Does our opponent find an answer to the bridge before we find an answer to the uh, Disruptor Flute. Bad news for us is our opponent's crying sick, so that's gonna help them. So what we need to do, <clears throat> so here's a full hard lock. So we need to have Scepter Chant. So that keeps our opponent from casting spells other than instants, essentially, or things at instant speed. So that's number one. That's like the soft lock, because that does get some decks, but it doesn't shut down instants. There's still ways we lose through it. So piece two is we need to Fairy. So Teferi makes it so our opponent can't cast spells except as sorceries. So that's almost a hard lock. That shuts down our opponent from casting things at instant speed and at sorcery speed. What it doesn't stop though is channel lands. That's the one last thing we need to answer. So the final piece of the puzzle is Karn to get a Pithy Needle to shut down Beseju or in some matchups a Tuara. And then it's the hard lock. You don't get to attack. You don't get to cast things for the rest of the game. A bonus. Going to make some mana for Eldrazi. Finish their scrawl. And they're drawing. Sacking spawns. Why sack spawns if you have mana? Oh god. Oh, this is something really big. Ulamog? It might be Ulamog. New, new Ulamog. Yup. Well, there goes half our library. That doesn't actually really beat us, though. Because <laughs> we have Elixir of Immortality in our sideboard. Opponent exiles a bunch of stuff, gets a huge Ulamog. Although, it doesn't matter as long as the bridge is out. Okay, the bridge is no longer out. Grab the Hollowed Fountain. And then we get the Surveil Land. 
Come on, answer to Disruptor Flute. <laughs> Come on. Well, our opponent probably only has one Besaju, right? So we might have answered the Besaju problem. Supreme Verdict. Do we want a second one? We already have one. Yeah, I think we just mill it. Well, let's see what we can draw. We drop to eight. Teferi. So Teferi can bounce the Disruptor Flute. They can't cast stuff at instant speed. Our opponent just spent the Besaju. Well, unless our opponent has another Besaju effect, which we can lock out with the car next turn, I think. This should do it. Bounce the Disruptor Flute. That turns on the Scepter. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. And now this is, this is the lock, this is the lock, this is the lock. And what makes this so good is we can still kick the Orm's Chant. So we pay two for Scepter, and then we have the option to pay the extra cost. So not only does this stop our opponent from casting spells, it's going to stop these Eldrazi from annihilating us. <laughs> Chant ya. No spells. No attacks. They need a Besaju, basically. Besaju or, uh, I guess, a Tuara if you're blue. Like, those are the only outs I can think of to this. Like, some sort of channel effect that isn't a spell. We need one more mana to Karn for a Pithy Needle. And be able to, and be able to Scepter Chant Kicker. One, two, three, four. One, one, two. Yeah, we're one mana short. Well, I guess we can play the Karn, even though we can't Pithy Needle this turn. We could play the Wondering instead. The One Ring can sometimes, how many Karns do we have? The One Ring can sometimes buy us a turn of not needing the Scepter Chant, but that's not going to work against a huge Annihilating Ulamog over there. I mean, we can't afford to take a single attack. We can just Wrath, I guess. I'm not sure they even have a second Besaju. Yeah, let's just sweep. Like, a lot of decks only have one Besaju, so we might not even have to be worried about it, but that's the, the only thing that can theoretically beat us. Well, let's Scepter. And chant, yeah. I mean, we're going to pay the kicker because of Through the Breach. I guess that doesn't matter because <laughs> they can't cast spells. So I guess we don't even really need to play the kicker at this point. Well, that should do it. Pony can't cast anything. We untap. Now we Karn. We don't have to worry about paying the kicker. So Karn, get the Pithing Needle. Good name is Seiju. And opponent doesn't even wait and scoops it up. And that Scepter chant, locking out the Eldrazi. We are doing some more <laughs> scepter chanting in modern, and sure, we'll reveal Kahira, might as well. And ooh, <laughs> that's a scepter, that's a chant, that's a fairy, that is kind of the nut draw, sort of. The question's gonna be do we just run it out? Do we just run it out and hope that it lives, or do we gotta play it slow? I guess ideally it might be like turn three to fairy, turn four, scepter chant, activate. Well, we'll see. It'll depend on what our opponent's doing. Well, we're on the draw, which is a little awkward. Hopefully our opponent's hand isn't super duper fast. Passing, okay. Guild of Guin. Well, let's Hollowed Fountain. You. What is our opponent up to? Gonna crack the fetch. Grabs the surveillance. Was this? It could be Yogg, I guess. Leaves it on top. So Saltai. Probably not Yogg. I don't think I've ever seen Saltai Yogg. It might be a Nadu deck. Opponent. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think we know what our opponent's doing, which is they're doing Nadu things. There's a Shoku. Opponent equips it, because might as well. Uh, well, in that case, I think we'd... I mean, we can't stop the combo if they have it. Our best bet might be passing and bluffing a counter. I think that's... I think that's the best bet. If we Scepter Chant, they know it's coming. Come on, not a Nadu. Ooh, Springheart Nantucko. Okay, well, that's awkward. Fetch land to make a couple tokens. It's kind of funny how... Scoot Swarm... Zero modern play, period, none. <laughs> I mean, maybe against odds play, but no real modern, like competitive modern play. You lower the cost by one, and you have a card that's seeing a lot of play. Well, play the island. Are we just passing and pluffing again? <laughs> this is going to be a tricky matchup, too, because they probably have instant speed ways to, uh, to get the naughty, like, Corda calling, which gets around the Scepter chant. Well, yeah, let's... Oh, let's pass. Hopefully our opponent's very afraid of our open blue mana and doesn't go for it. Ah, I don't know. Is this too, is this just too conservative? Should we just be, maybe we should have just slammed everything and not tried to play around anything. Not it was just so punishing where like a single misstep and you just die upon it. Dryad Arbor, which is going to trigger the Nantucko. Oh God, are they just courting for Nadu right now? We might die without casting a spell here. Opponent gets the Nadu. 
Uh, yeah, we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just, that went horribly. We're just gonna scoop. Okay, so probably should have played that more aggressively. We can bring in a pithy needle. Yeah, I think maybe the lesson from that game is we just gotta slam it. The hope of like, if we leave up blue mana and look like a control deck, maybe they won't cast it. That did not work at all. <laughs> not even a little bit. On to game number two against Nadu. We get to be on the play at least, which is a little bit of good news. Uh, this hand, I like the Pithy Needle. We can Pithy Needle the Shuko. That's that's something. Gonna need to hit our land drops. The land binding could be helpful at some point. Let's lead on the fetch land. Probably get a surveil land, I guess, to hit our land drops. I mean, I guess Karn also shuts down Shuko if we're alive by the time Karn comes down. A bonant. Mm, a halfling. Okay. Getting their ramp on. That's a little scary, because that means Nadu could come down next turn, although without a combo piece, it doesn't really beat us. Let's crack the fetch. Grab a archive. Do a little surveilling. Wondering, gotta go graveyard, unfortunately. Gonna be a smidge slow here, I think. Let's see what we can draw. Ugh, second Karn. I'll play the island, and I mean, I guess we just Pithing Needle here. Pithing Needle, name the Shuko, which is the most common combo piece at least, right? I'm sure they have a backup, like Outrider and Core most likely, but at least that shuts down one of the big ones. Oh man, this matchup. So it's also worth mentioning, we haven't really done this yet, but Worms Champ can also be a good <laughs> one turn silence. There are times when just casting it fairly can be pretty effective. I don't know if Nadu's one of those times, like in theory, this doesn't actually work in practice, but in theory, you could let your opponent like draw their deck with Nadu and then they go to cast the Thassa's Oracle. And when they do, you arms chant, and they can't cast spells and you get them. The thing is they're gonna draw into ways to protect the combo. Uh, I, I am uh, very confident because that's how the decks are built. So it doesn't actually work in practice, but those kind of things are worth keeping in mind. Opponent, Walla Roots, Spring and Nataco, man, they've had some good draws. We need something good, at least a land. And, okay, Flooded Strand helps. That does help. This is actually kind of a funny scenario. So we can get a Triome to cast the Leyline Binding, or we can get a Surveil Land to try to fan land number four to Supreme Verdict, which would be the most ideal outcome. Oh, there goes a Besaju, which I guess means our opponent does not care about this Pithing Needle. If they have Nadu here, do they win? One, two, three, four. If they have Nadu, Nadu Cord, wow, they could actually get Outrider in Cord. Well, there's a summoner's pack. There's an Nadu. I mean, they don't have the combo piece at the moment, right? Uh, should we have just Orms chanted in response to the summoner's pact? Maybe. I always value trying to hold on to the Orms chant for the lock, but I think that would have been the better play now that I'm thinking about it. Because if we did that, our opponent would have had to not play Nadu this turn, right? Because they couldn't cast spells. And then next turn, they'd have to pay for the pact. So that would also keep them from casting Nadu. Yeah, I think that would have been correct. Oh, I will I will accept the punt on that one. Cause I think that, oh, it's always, it's so hard to just spend your Orms chance. <laughs> right after I talked about how sometimes it's worth spending them, we choose not to do it and are gonna get Nadu here. Yeah, I think that would have been a better line. Not that it would let us win, but it would have just slowed our opponent down by a couple turns. Well, now we gotta see if we can answer this Nadu. The solitude is not the worst. So we can get the trio. So with this trigger on the stack, Leyline Binding, hopefully they don't also have Corda Calling. Okay, so get rid of the Nadu. Opponent still gets to draw a card because Nadu's kind of busted. That beak, stupid bird. <laughs> It's the Ragavan of MH3. It doesn't play like Ragavan, but do they really? Oh, come on now. You really just have the cord. <sighs> this is so bad for us. Uh, so the problem here is, so we can, <laughs> we're going to pitch the chant anyway. Um, so we can Solitude to target the Nadu again, let our opponent draw another card. But because we have to do this before anything resolves, because if we don't, our opponent just combos off with a removal on the stack. Now they can just cord for the, another Nadu <laughs> and be set up to do the thing again. And they get a free Ancestral Recall out of all of this, where they drew from their Pendle Haven and from our removal spells. Good, clean, fair magic. <laughs> <laughs> Nadu, it's back. I mean, Nadu is definitely the best bird in Magic, right? What else is even in there? What's the number two bird in Magic? That's my question. I think Nadu immediately number one. What's even number two? 
or is there any other good bird in magic fledgling offspring maybe fledgling offspring but seriously that's bird ragavan right are there any other good birds I'm not sure that there are. I will also say our opponents had really very, very solid Nadu draws, right? Like I would say these are above average draws. Both games, they had Springheart and Tucko. They had the Nadu and at least one tutor and or at least one tutor. So they just like, they kind of had everything they needed to combo off on on turn three or like super early in the game that's part of it right i think these i would say they're both above average not that they're like well i don't know maybe it's the nut draw is like delighted halfling into Springheart into nadu plus cord that's that's actually pretty close to about as good as your draws get with this deck i think you gotta pay for the pact Gotta pay for the pact. There's still a world that our opponent like doesn't have another combo piece here. They have to spend their turn paying for the pack. And then we just land Supreme Verdict. Yeah, you drew a bunch of cards, but ugh, another fetch land. Cracks the fetch land. Gets an island, makes another token. Oh, seriously? Oh, okay, maybe this was an Udra. Delighted Halfling into Spring Art Nantucko, into Pact, into Double Corda Calling. Yeah, I guess we are probably just never gonna beat this hand in a million billion years. <laughs> Not ew. Well, dying with the Supreme Verdict in hand kind of brutal, but and cord for three means yeah, Outrider and Core, which is Shuko on a stick, and that means we're dead. There's no point in sitting through it and hoping they fizzle, I don't think. Like I know there's some percent chance it happens, but uh, the odds not high enough in this situation. It is time for some more scepter chanting in modern. And I like this hand. We don't have the chant, but we have a scepter and a counter spell, which counter spells kind of our backup scepter target. It is <laughs> giving up the oh turn one Tamio. It is giving up the element of surprise, right? Thankfully we have this prismatic ending to put an end to this Tamio. Uh would prefer our opponent not to start making clues. So the thing about the Tamio, like obviously flipping is really scary, but in a grindy matchup, just like making two or three clues actually kind of valuable. Wow, they're gonna force to protect it. Well, I guess this is one of those games where everyone's gonna start with like four cards in hand because I think we're gonna solitude, pitching a solitude to get rid of the Tamio. Well, all right, opponent forced themselves to protect the Tamio. We force ourselves solitude style to get rid of it. And now we play a game of magic. We have gotten through turn one. Oh, this format. Opponent, preordained. Getting things set up for the future. Question's gonna be, do we slam Scepter Counter Spell or do we, or do we wait and try to find a champ on it? Land untapped and even more Tamios. <laughs> okay. Well, let's play the fetch land. Hmm, let's get the triome and pass. So opponent's gonna get a turn with the Tamio. For some reason, I was thinking we'd be able to fetch up a land that would let us one mana Leyline Binding, but not actually possible. Opponent gets it, it's us. Thankfully, Leyline Binding can answer Tamio even if it flips. Ooh, there's a Teferi, which we would love to get down. Well, I think we gotta pass. When our opponent goes to crack the clue, if they do, then we can get rid of this Tamiya or attempt to. Hopefully they don't have a second force. That would be really awkward. This does mean we can't leave the counter spell up, but Leila Binding. Okay, well, we've dealt with two Tamios. They've only made a single clue. Passing, ooh, no land. That's really nice news. Oh, I think we got to pass for now. We got to wait. We got to wait. We need, we need, uh, little, little, I'm so excited. I can't talk. We need more mana. We need more mana. So we can Scepter Chant plus Counter Spell. That's what we need. If we get one more land, then I think we probably go for it with Counter Backup. Well, that is a land. All right, Misty. Ah, can we keep waiting? Can we play Teferi first? I mean, our opponent's doing literally nothing. They likely have Counter Spell in hand. They're missing land drops. We're not missing land drops. I think it's better to wait. I think we're just gonna wait. In a control mirror, which I think is, you could consider this a control mirror, being the person to hit your land drops is a huge advantage. So if our opponent's not gonna draw lands, they're gonna be just going to hand size here shortly. Oh, I really want to counter spell. We're gonna, ah. Normally counter spelling preordain would be horrible, but with our opponent missing land drops, I think it's worth it. They drew the preordain this turn, obviously. So they're not gonna hit their land drop. Now our opponent only has one land. We can, ooh, all right, play the land. Resolves, yes, yes, chant it, yes. Opponent, how would you like not casting spells for the rest of the game? 
And then what we can do is next turn, we can get down the Teferi, and that is the full hard lock upkeep. Let's uh, do a little step drink, do a little, a little chanting, perhaps just a, just a tiny, a tiny bit of chanting here. Uh, oh no. Oh, okay. Well, we're not chanting yet. I clicked him properly. It's not going to matter because our opponent's not going to cast a spell anyway. So uh, no harm, no foul. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, all right. Archive. Ooh, one ring. We'll keep it one ring. We're not going to cast it yet because we're going to keep locking you. But uh, I think we keep it for the future. So I almost think we I think we chant now to make sure we get down to fairy. Opponent going to bolt our face. That is acceptable. And then our opponent essentially has a single turn. Let's actually click this right okay there we there we go yes you cannot cast cabals this turn now we play teferi our opponent has one turn take out the teferi our opponent has one turn with two lands that they can cast spells after that no spells for the rest of the game the only thing we could do to strengthen the lock would be pithy needle atuara opponent finds land number three all right opponent if you're gonna win the game you better do it now <laughs> because the lock is hard i don't know if they have artifact destruction in their main deck opponent flame oh no flame of a oh, okay the game continues ah oh. That one turn window. See, the thing is with Flame of Venor, it wouldn't have mattered, right? Like, without the Teferi, they can just blow it up during our turn anyway. So I think it was was correct to play the Teferi. It's just unfortunate that it didn't work out the way we wanted. The good news is, I think we're still in pretty good shape. It's awkward that our opponent has so many more cards in hand than we do, but we're way ahead on mana. And we have the One Ring, which is going to catch us back up in cards pretty quickly. And we have a Teferi, so eventually we will draw another... Well, okay. Eventually, we won't draw a Scepter Chant. Our opponent will scoop it up. That's one of those games where, like, the reason our opponent was losing was we we're just so far ahead in mana. <laughs> like, that's what it comes down to. Like, by every other axis, on every other axis, our opponent was doing pretty well, right? Like, they were fine in life. They had more cards than us. But we we're just so far ahead in mana. And with the one ring to replace all the cards we were down, not very realistic for our opponent to catch back up. Probably an early scoop, but I, I respect that. Those are the kind of games that I like scooping. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we really change anything. All right, out of game two against... Tamio is it? Might be like Murktide? Is it control with Tamio? Sand seems reasonable. Not a, especially close to Scepter chanting, but we got some removal. We got a counter. A moment. Preordain. That is perfectly fine. Not facing down at turn one Tamio is nice. Pleasant. Solitude. Well, let's play the fetch land and pass E old turn. And, well, there's the Tamiyo. Thankfully, we're playing Modern and not Timeless, so we don't got to worry about a Brainstorm flipping it. Although, I guess we get Solitude if we were super desperate. <sighs> this is tough. Yeah, let's get an Archive. We want to hit our land drops. All right, there's a the land. The Triome's the other option, right? Just to reduce the cost on Leyline Binding, but this might be a... Are they missing their land drop? Oh, boy. Well, in that case, I think we're... We're just going to uh, do a little Solitude in here. Get rid of this Tamiyo. Yeah, opponent. Ooh, after losing a game because you didn't have lands, keeping the one lander, that is hard. That is that is tough. Well, now we get to sit on the counter spell. And this is looking a little like last game. Opponent undaps. Finds land number two. Alright, so that's big for our opponent. The game the game will actually be a game. Well, crack the fetch. Grab another archive. Well, I mean, we want lands, but we can't not keep to fairy in this matchup. Uh, Misty Rainforest gets a Surveil Land. Mills Flame of Anor. Wow, still not finding the lands. I almost feel bad for our opponent here. I mean, I feel good that we're winning, but bad that our opponent is just not doing a good job hitting land drops. We're actually going to mill the counter spell. We'd rather have a land. No, well, there's a land. Triple Meticulous Archive paying off in our land drops past the turn. And no land scoops it up. Well, that was easy. It is time for some more scepter chanting in modern, and this hand pretty reasonable. Got a scepter, got some planeswalkers, got a removal spell. Seems fine. See what our opponent's up to. Surveil land, and 
I think we keep the counter, especially on the play. Like, yes, we want to hit another land, but I think it's better to better to have a counter spell here. Opponent cycle street race. So shadow, maybe living end watery grave here. OK, so not living end. Got to be got to be a shadow deck of some kind, I think. Draws a card, passes. We draw a counter spell. Fetch land, go. Passes. Well, let's play the fetch. Supreme Verdict could be relevant at some point, maybe. I don't know why. So I was talking to Richard and Krim on a podcast a bit ago, and apparently there was a Demir deck that was playing Shadow of a Doubt, and now I'm afraid to crack my fetches. <laughs> I got the fear. I got the fear of the Shadow of Doubt. <laughs> I am experiencing a shadow of doubt, you might say, about cracking these fetch lands. Okay, there's a shadow. Come on, don't, don't do it. All right, crack a fetch. They're probably not really playing shadow of a doubt, right? I don't, I, maybe it's also partly timeless, because sometimes you just get stifled and timeless. So now I'm very afraid of cracking my fetches. All right, well, get an island. So I think we're good. I think we counterspell the shadow. Oh, all right, let's get a surveil land. Let's get a surveil in and see if there's a land on top. We might just let it go in Supreme Verdict. Maybe they play like two shadows. Oh, tamp land on top. That means we can't wrath. How risky is it? We're going to let it go. We have the prismatic ending too, right? So we always just prismatic ending it and still leave up the counter spell and still have the wrath for the future. Let's play the triome. Get rid of this death shadow. Attempt to prismatic ending oh, opponent counter spell. Well, yeah, let's let's counter it back, I think. Death Shatter just gets so big so quick that letting it live is risky, even with the Supreme Verdict in hand. Fetch land and passing. Well, opponent probably has a bunch of counters. Opponent's got the upkeep stop set. Upkeep stop set. More prismatic endings. Well, prismatic endings not horrible. I'd rather draw land, but we'd rather resolve the Karn. I mean, if we resolve to fairy, life is great. If we don't, then it eats a counter and maybe Karn comes down next turn. Opponent. Drowned it. Fancy drowned in the lock. All right. Uh, about it. Well, next up, can we resolve Karn? <laughs> Karn can get the scepter, or it can get a one ring to find a scepter. Opponent swamp. And Tammy, you. All right. Well, we have a prismatic ending, so that should be fine. Uh, about it. So I think we try to prismatic ending the Tamio. Opponent. Cow, wow, they got a lot of counters. Son is a lot of counters. I mean, so we get the counter out of our opponent's hand. And then I guess we just Supreme Verdict. I really don't want the Tamu to flip, and we also don't want to start drawing cards. If our opponent starts playing heading cards, that's gonna be really, really, really bad for us. So I think we just got a Supreme Verdict here. Get rid of the Tamio. We're kind of close, right? Like we're trading off all these resources. Everyone's getting low on cards, but then we just scepter chant you and win? in theory. Misty Rainforest. We'll play the Misty. I think we just got to play the Karn. We could like play the chant to make sure Karn resolves, but I think this is this is fine. Do you have another counter? No. All right. Well, Karn, I think we take the One Ring here. Our next tutor can snag the Scepter, and then we get to start drawing cards and see what happens. If we can get down this one ring, then we're in. Well, and there's no Bowmasters. <laughs> then we're in really good shape. We haven't seen a Bowmasters yet. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it was in our opponent's deck. Just passing? Okay, we're we're good with that. Grab a, another Surveil land. Uh, let's go Graveyard. Well, our opponent didn't counter the Karn last turn, right? They didn't counter the Karn which means they probably don't have a counter. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. Take down the card. Isochron Scepter. Play the Scepter. It'll be fine. You <laughs> won't not be able to ever cast a spell again. Uh, resolves, put an Orb's Chan under it, play the Field of Ruin, and the lock has been assembled. So what are we worried about our opponent breaking out of this lock? We know they have instant speed stuff. So a Teferi would be nice eventually. I mean, we can also use, we can also use Scepter to protect our one ring during our turn just to get it down and start uh, generating some card advantage. So well, let's see if our opponent has an answer. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, upkeep. We will do a little, just a little chanting. Just a, uh, just a little. How about no spells being cast this turn? It's kind of like a time walk repeatedly, right? It's not exactly because our opponent still gets to draw a card 
And they can, like, attack with their creatures if we don't kick it or whatever. Activate their planeswalkers if they had one. So they can still, like, do some things during their turn. Activate a one ring. But not being able to cast spells is, like... Yeah, probably 80% of a time walk or something. Wow, there's a Teferi. Well, that should do it, assuming we can resolve it. So I think we're actually going to Scepter now. Chance our opponent can't cast any spells. And that'll make sure the Teferi comes down. This does give our opponent a one-turn window during their turn to play something. But after that, they're just hard, like, fully... Oh, boy. All right, well, I'm glad we did that. Because our opponent did draw a counter. Well, hmm. Let's... Tick up the Karn. Yeah, let's just, let's play it safe. Because we can just try this again during our next turn, right? Like, we can just Scepter again. There's no reason to run it out and do another counter spell. Opponents, you know, well, okay. Maybe there's one reason, which is a Thought Seize, but we have two big payoffs in hand. Of an opponent who sees the hand and scoops it up cannot beat the scepter chant. Well, I mean that's that's a reason to play the deck, right? You just you get to lock them. You get to lock them. Uh, I don't know if we really change much here during sideboarding. The beauty of a card board, I guess we can like trim to bring in one disruptor flute, and that's about it. Or run it like that. I don't know. I'm almost wondering if. Kahir is even worth a sideboard slot in this deck. Maybe it's just me because I don't think about companions very much. So there's probably times when we could put it in hand and when we don't. But maybe just another artifact for Klarn or like a removal spell or something would be better. Uh, yeah, I mean, this one's fine. We got the scepter. We can put the counter spell on it. That is kind of like a backup backup plan. We don't do that very often, but there are times when it is the thing to do. Well, opponent starts with a bobble and a fetch land cracks the fetch land. Watery Grave, Untapped, and Nether Coif. Okay. Opponents, uh, <laughs> a little more threat heavy this game. Last game, they spun their wheels a lot, drew a million counters, but did not, oh, another scepter, but did not actually get a threat on the battlefield. Land. Oh, that's kind of the worst. Oh, we really need to hit our land drops, but we can't not keep an answer for this nether glaive. So we gotta keep the prismatic ending opponent. Untaps, draws with the bobble. Opponent. Thought sees. Well, thankfully, the prismatic ending's on the top of our deck, so I can't take that. What do they take here? Counterspell, maybe? Teferi, maybe? I guess it could be Solitude. Solitude does answer something eventually. It is painful. It's kind of funny how modern magic works. That, like, two for one yourself with Solitude. Oh, yeah, whatever, like, sure. Or same with grief, just like scamming and going down so many cards. Yeah, yeah, whatever, like worth it. <laughs> because you have these powerful card advantage engines, right? You have the One Ring or you have Necrodominance or like you have Karn and Tavir. Like you have these answers that make, wow, opponents on the One Lander? No, there's no way they're, no way they kept a One Lander. Wow, they did. All right, well, oh, Prismatic Ending, get rid of this another Goyf. Might as well play the land first. I don't know if it really matters, but. And then we can start surveilling to hit our lands. If our opponent doesn't start hitting their land drops, they might be in trouble here. Although we do have two scepters in hand that aren't really doing much at the moment. Well, another goyf down. Ooh, land number two. Okay, that's that's a big draw for our opponent. Cracks it. Water gave untapped down to 12 deaths shadow. Can we hit a land? Uh let's take a archive. Surveil, digging for a land. Supreme verdict. Would be really nice if we had. A bunch more mana. All right, there's the land, Misty Rainforest. Stubborn Denial is a thing that our opponent definitely could have. Maybe we go Scepter, and if it resolves, put the counter spell under it. That might be our best bet. I'm kind of fine with it getting countered if that does happen. All right. Opponent does not counter. Well, there goes the counter spell. Play the Misty Rainforest past the turn. So either they don't have Stubborn Denial, or they don't care enough about scepter to counter so Ooh, another land okay all right all right all right so opponent definitely in their land drops after starting with one keeping the one lander opponent untap land down and nine grows the goif this counter spell under the scepter not looking super oh dear not looking super helpful here well i mean get our last surveil land now i'm not even sure what we're looking for we still need lands but we need answers more immediately than lands Grab the archive, number three. Archive drawn, best drawn. Prismatic ending. All right. I mean, that's an answer to a dash shadow. That does not necessarily solve all of life's problems, but that does solve one of life's problems. Get rid of the dash shadow. So now all we need is 
Oh, man. One more removal spell. Oh, can we live long enough? That shadow is just so big so fast. That's kind of the issue, right? It just gets so big so fast. Attacks. Well, it comes down to this. If we don't find a way to answer this death shadow... Oh, Supreme Verdict would be so good if we had one more mana. I mean, I think we have to try to play the Teferi. The risk is Fetchland kills us, right? Fetchland, Shockland, our opponent loses enough life for this Death Shadow to... Oh, there's the Stubborn Denial. We knew that was a possibility. Well, okay. Now we gotta hope that our opponent doesn't have a Fetchland. And then that we draw a land that lets us Supreme Verdict. No Fetching. No Fetch... Oh, come on. MDFC betrayed. <laughs> Betrayed by the MDFC. Somehow, our opponent kept a one lander and ended up with more lands than we did. Oh, well, I don't know if we really change anything. In Karn, tutoring things from the sideboard, we trust. All right, on to game three. We get to be on the play. Well, we will reveal the Kahira. Well, this is not horrible, right? So the two arms chance, we need a scepter to go with them, which Karn can get in the future. The Triumph will turn on Lane Line Binding next turn, and we have a Solitude, so we have two ways to answer something that's super broken. Land. Watery Grave. And Tammy you. Opponent. Cycle Street Wraith. Oh god, is this the turn one Tamio flip? Alright, well we can just Lane Line Binding it. Opponent takes it up. Well, that's unfortunate. It is very, very, very difficult to turn one flip Tamio in modern. You literally need two street rays, I think. I don't know if there's any other any other free card draw that does it. Well, there's the scepter to go with the chant, which is great once we deal with the Tamio. I think we just line line binding. This would be a window to get down scepter champ, but I think we gotta deal with the Tamio first, so <sighs> Oh no. <laughs> Oh no, I guess we should have solituded it. Two straight, turn one Tamio, two straight race, and force blue card to back it up. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess, I guess maybe we should have solitude. I thought we needed to save the solitude because to deal with a, a future death shadow. The problem is Tamio ultimating does win our opponent the game. Like, I know it doesn't say win the game, but it does. There's no way we win after our opponent draws half their deck and has no max hand size. It's it's not possible. Well, Scepter. I guess, yeah, there's just no way. Because we saw the MDFC, right? So we know our opponent has an instance being answered to Scepter chant. So it's not like it's not like we can just lock them while they have half their deck in their hand. Because we know they have ways to disrupt this and instant speed in their deck. Opponent untaps. So we need to draw <sighs> an answer to the Tamio. Was that a punt to not solitude? Maybe it was a punt to I mean, this is the Tamio nightmare. Passes. Well, let's do a little surveilling. Prismatic ending. Leyline binding, not a Karn. Come on, magic gods. Come on, magic gods. Come on, magic gods. To fairy. And Tamio's gonna ultimate, and we scoop it up. Well, that was brutal. It is time to do some more scepter chanting. Can we lock our opponents out of playing? And he spells it all forever in this hand. Got a bunch of planeswalkers. We're we're super friends now, apparently. <laughs> Superfriends.hand.deck. Oh god, meticulous archive. Is this a control mirror? Well, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up. We might be here for a minute. Well, let's uh crack our fetch land. Grab a meticulous archive. And learning revealed, I think, is fine. If we hit our lands, maybe we can draw cards with it. If we don't hit our lands, then maybe we can cycle it for a land. Probably going to be a lot of that. I get a feeling there might be a lot of a land going here for the for short term. I mean, maybe our opponent's not control. That would be my guess. Like, just meticulous archive from hand. That makes me think they're, I don't know, Je in Jeskai controls, a popular archetype. So it would make sense that they were like a Jeskai control deck. Uh, solitude to the great Vyard. I don't think we cycle. I don't think we, t mm, okay. Now we definitely know Teferi. If we have, if we have a counter spell, we'll just play the land past the turn. I'm very curious, if you're watching this, if you're watching this, do you like watching control mirrors? What do you think? So I, I mentioned this earlier in the video, I think that, uh, 
I I tend to not play control decks in content, even though I kind of like playing control decks because I don't know if they make very good content. I imagine I don't know if they're very interesting to watch. Right. Like think of this control mirror where there's going to be a lot of just like play land past the turn, dig for land past the turn. Like that's going to happen for a while. Is that intriguing? Do you enjoy watching that? Is it like fun to watch or you're like oh my god like i have no interest in this they're not doing anything like make something happen please so very curious what you think of control decks for uh for content do you do you enjoy watching because i think playing control mirrors incredibly intricate right like all your decisions matter down to what lands you fetch at one time like there's so much that goes into them well we're gonna draw a solitude anyway there's so much that goes into them that i think they're incredibly interesting to play some of the most interesting games of magic to play i don't know if that counts uh for watching though if you're watching someone else play them <laughs> maybe maybe not the most exciting because like we're what you wanted to turn five now turn four for our opponent and like no one's done anything except surveilled in past and we have a handful of cards we could be playing it's just not correct to play them and i'm sure our opponent's the same way because you really in a control mirror you really want your opponent to be the one to blink first and you also want your opponent to be the one to start missing land drops first those are those are the two most important things what we care about above all not casting spells none of that we just want to Make sure that we keep hitting our land drops and hope that our opponent stops hitting their land drops and feels like they have to start casting spells first. If they do that, then we hopefully win the counter war over their spells and we get to resolve something. As I say all this, we are going to play this to fairy because we have a counter spell to back it up. Our opponent going to counter spell. That's fine. Yeah, got us opponent. We're not going to go shields down here. This might make our opponent think we don't have a counter spell since we didn't counter back to protect her to fairy and to fairy is very valuable in this matchup. I would rather since we're in our land drops, though, I would rather just wait, make our opponent not know that we don't have a counter spell. Wait, not know that we do have a counter spell. And plus, we can start trying to jam these cards. We also might flash in solitude at some point. Glad we're hitting our land drops. That's good. That is that is solid. There's a field of ruin. Well, one, two, three, four. Karn. How many counters you got? How many counters you got, opponent? Once again, we will not counter back. Okay, counter spell. The answer's a lot. Answer's a lot. Two counter spells in hand. Well, that's two counters down, though, right? So we've gone through two of them. That's good. I think the real the real winning card in this matchup. So obviously, if we know some of the lock, that's going to be pretty sweet. We are going to need to ferry to make it hard. I think when it comes down to it, the winning card is probably the one ring. If one player managed to stick a one ring and the other player does not have a one ring, I think the one ring player. I mean, I guess that's true. I guess that's true in a broad sense in a lot of matchups, but I think that is doubly, triply, especially true in a control mirror. Like if one person is drawing two, three, four cards a turn, the other one's not. Uh, the person who's drawing all the cards going to going to win the game. Well, let's just grab Kahira. We're not going to run out this Karn. Now we're starting to uh, get a little light on a little light on threats. We finally got Kahira though. <laughs> we did it. Kahira, Kahira is showing up. I don't know if we're even going to cast it because I don't know if it does anything, but <laughs> Kahira has served a actual purpose. Found it. Surveil land. So, I mean, here we are on what? I don't even know. Turn seven, turn eight now. Still nothing on the battlefield except for land. Ooh, Arena of Glory. So, our opponent, they got to be a Flage deck if they're playing Arena of Glory, which makes sense. Flage is like very popular in Jeskai control decks. I think we just got to blow up the arena glory. Flage is good anyway. I don't want to get hasty flage. Hasty flage is so much damage. Well, blow up the arena of glory opponent. Brain surge. Oh, maybe this is like, is this a miracles deck? This might be a miracles deck. Our opponent might be, might be trying to like terminus in treat angels. Does anyone play in treat angels anymore? Thin the deck. Grab a land. Even though we don't really want to thin our deck of lands, we want to keep drawing lands. Oh, there's a scepter. I don't know if we want to scepter this counter spell. It's probably better just to hold it at this point. So the thing is, if we scepter it, our opponent knows it's there, and they can blow up the scepter to get rid of it. Let's let's try it. I bet our opponent just counters the scepter, and I'm fine with that. I don't honestly don't even know if I want to put the counter spell under the scepter if it resolves. I'm just kind of hoping it eats a counter spell, and then we've gone through counter spell number three. If it does resolve that I guess we have to put the counter spell under it or else because our opponent called our bluff. <laughs> yes, counter. Okay, counter spell number three down. We did it. 
Well done, Isochron Scepter. You thought seized a counter spell, and now we will play this Karn. Our opponent hopefully doesn't have the mana to counter twice more, and then Karn gets the one ring, and the one ring wins. Opponent for a negation. Well, okay, counter spell. We will finally spend this counter spell that we've been holding forever. Well, there's the Karn. Take down the Karn. Karn going to snag a one ring. Yeah, I think for now it's just the one ring. My theory is still, like I said before, like in a control mirror, if you're the one with the one, one ring, you're going to win. Like you'll find the cards to win eventually with the one ring opponent. Oof, like, I am glad we had that one of Field of Ruin. <laughs> that one of Field of Ruin, I think we would have lost. Like, if our opponents still had that Arena of Glory, they'd hit us to 12. And then Flage, Hasty Flage from the Graveyard is nine more. We'd be at three. We would essentially just, we wouldn't be literally dead, but we'd be very, very close to just straight up dead. One of the upsides of Kahira is it is good for pitching to Solitude. That might be, that might be Kahira's main, main purpose in this deck. Well, land is fine. We, we're cool with it in our land drops. Medicula's Archive. Definitely keeping a counter spell. Ugh, since we have a counter spell, I think we don't one ring yet, even though our opponent knows we have it in hand. Because we know we'll have a counter to defend it next turn. So hopefully our opponent just gets back Flage and we can Solitude it, get rid of it. Opponent, fetch land. There's the Flage. Sure. Well, as long as we get to answer this with Solitude, this is fine. We dropped to 12 for now, but 12 is very much not dead. And one, two, three, four, and five. Do a little Solituding. Kahira, <laughs> staying alive, did not get pitched. Uh, snipe the Flage. Maybe we can get back a, a little bit of life with the Solitude. That would also be fine. I wouldn't be surprised if our opponent had a removal in hand. We haven't given them a single target for removal. Well, let's play the one ring cracking their arid mesa to get a godless shrine why black mana okay opponent's gonna go snapcaster counter spell so that means i think our opponent is most likely out of counters in hand usually when you get to the snapcaster counter spell there's usually a good chance that means you are you don't have any other options well here comes snappy for the counter spell. Thankfully, we have a counter spell. Good thing we waited a turn and didn't run out the one ring last turn. Counter the counter. Man, that's what the fourth counter spell our opponents cast. But now we get the one ring, which is huge. The black mana does make me wonder if our opponent's playing ley line, but ooh. Uh, not going to complain against another uh, about another one ring. We're gonna get him with the solitude. We could play Kahira here. I don't think we should play Kahira here. I think even though we know we have nothing in hand, our opponent doesn't know that. So we wanna make our opponent at least worry about the possibility of a counter spell. We don't want them to know that they have free reign to do whatever they want. So we're just gonna leave our mana up. We're gonna pass, plus, I am under no illusion that this Kahira is going to get in 24 points of damage and win the game. Like, <laughs> it's it's not going to, it's just going to get flaged at some point. Like, it doesn't really matter. But we did get to gain a couple life with our Solitude, which is nice. Back up to 15. Relevant in a one ring world. Oh, opponent's back. If you hear chewing in the, oh, they do have Ley Line Binding. All right. Well, we have another one ring. If you hear aggressive chewing in the background, that's just, that is just bear chomping on a bone. I don't know if the mic's picking up or not, but if you, if you hear any crunching, it's, that's what's going on. Uh, opponent, Ley Line Binding gets rid of our one ring. Well, one ring to draw a second one ring, not bad. So now we're what? Fast turn 10, on to turn 10 and <laughs> still nothing on the battlefield. I mean, I guess Ley Line Binding technically, but so how good is Scepter Chant? against control and the answer is you really need the teferi with teferi it's amazing uh without teferi it's like annoying for our opponent but they can play so much of their stuff at instant speed i don't think it necessarily necessarily is going to do a ton opponent after consideration passes we draw in Orm's Chant. Well, we don't have a Scepter to go with it, but I mean, in a control matchup too, Orm's Chant can just be used to resolve something. Like right now we could fire off Orm's Chant to be like, if you have a counter, you need to spend it on this or else we get to resolve something else. And then that would let us resolve the One Ring, but I don't know if we want to waste the Orm's Chant. Play the One Ring. I'm not convinced our opponent has a counter left. They've spent a lot of counters already. Well, all right. One Ring resolves. We get a little protection. The problem is so one ring ley line binding in response obviously fizzles the card draw so we want to wait until we minimize the odds of that happening oh temporal mastery extra turn it's a miracle hilariously though <laughs> orbs chat 
<laughs> Orbs chance can fizzle it. Uh, yes, we would like to Orbs chat. You can't cast spells this turn. Now we get to one ring because we don't have to worry about it answer. <laughs> oh, Miracle. If you draw a Miracle, it technically puts a trigger on this deck. If you only play paper, you probably don't even realize that's how it works. But you draw your Miracle card. It's a triggered ability that sh makes you reveal the card. So your opponent knows it's a card you just draw. In response to that, Orbs chant fizzle it. That's like two time walks that we essentially got two time walks. Our opponent would have taken an extra turn instead for one mana. Not only did we fizzle that extra turn, we essentially made our opponent skip that turn as well. Like they got to draw their miracle card and it's in their hand now, but we essentially double time walked for a single mana. That is the power of Zor Orms chat. <laughs> well, one ring draw. Ooh, there's a Karn. There is a Karn. What do we do with the Karn is the, the bigger the bigger question, do we cast it? It's sort of seeming like our opponent's out of counters. We know one of their cards in hand is a seven mana extra turn spell. Well, there's the Karn. Opponent does not have a counter. Take down the Karn. What do we want with this Karn though? So the one ring's gone. Curse Totem, Damping Sphere. Eventually we want Elixir of Immortality, but I don't think we need to go for that yet. But eventually that's a way that we we can win. That's our that's our win con. <laughs> Shuffle it all back in. Keep the fun going. Worm Coil is going to die. Cityscape Leveler. Our opponent just doesn't have permanence. It might just be stone. I mean, Scepter is good for the lock, but we're not very close to actually like locking. We could take it and just have it for if we draw a chance. Be prepared for a uh, for the possibility. Could also just take Stone Brain and try to get rid of maybe. Ah, oh, geez, what would we even name? Entreat the angels. Does anyone play that? We can know we can take temporal mastery from their hand to get rid of the extra turn spells. Well, let's play the the stone brain. I guess that's the plan. Is get well, all right. Pony spell snare. So I had to counter. Just couldn't counter the card. Uh, well, back to passing. Still not gonna play this Kahira. I mean, I guess at some point maybe we run out the Kahira just to say we did. What is? Oh, Solitude. Arkarn. Okay, sure. Flashes in the Solitude. So Solitude can attack down the Karn. I mean, we still are the one with the One Ring. If our opponent cannot deal with this One Ring, it's going to keep getting worse minute by minute, right? Like opponent gets in, it says, or hits the Karn rather. This One Ring should eventually put the game away or at least find a Scepter chant to put the game away. Also, we got to be, we got to be conscious of time and these matchups. I'm definitely <laughs> in testing this deck in a, Playing a couple leagues with it. I have definitely ran into situations where I just end up timing out. Like if you get the scepter chant lock going and your opponent refuses to scoop and you have to play it out and it actually gets to the point where you have to like get an elixir of immortality and shuffle your graveyard back in and like all that stuff. It is definitely possible that you can just run out of time that with, even if you're playing at a relatively, relatively respectable speed, it's just does not necessarily win quickly. Although in theory, you can like turn the corner, right? If you get like a, a one ring with Karn attacking or something. The problem is sometimes your opponent has a big board of creatures uh, where you're keeping them from attacking. Think of like the Eldrazi game where they had like Ulamogs on the battlefield and such, but they couldn't attack because of the Scepter chant lock where we keep them from attacking forever. In those scenarios, it's really hard to win with damage because your opponent has these blockers that are just always there. So that's when we end up having to like go for the elixir plan, which is just, it, it's effective. It just takes so long if your opponent refuses to scoop. Misty, crack it. Uh, grab a hollowed fountain tapped. Thankfully in this game, the clock's relatively even. Well, one ring gonna hit us down to 11. Ooh, all right, there's, there's the Orms chant. Oh, what if we draw the scepter? Well, let's draw with the one ring. To Ooh, Orms chant and a Teferi. Well, let's play a Teferi. Yeah, I think we bounce the one ring. Reset the counters on it. Then we can replay it, get the protection again. Ooh, Supreme Verdict. So it's not a great Supreme Verdict matchup, but I am not above <laughs> spending four mana to deal with the Solitude at some point. One ring returns and draw a card and it's Lorien revealed. I think we have an island left, right? We definitely have a Triome left. Yeah, let's island cycle. I don't think we need to draw with Lorien revealed. We are drawing plenty of cards with one rings here. Uh, well, take the basic island, play the basic island and yeah, pass the turn untaps well let's uh let's keep our opponent from casting oh 
Should have uh, probably kicked that. Well, our opponent can't cast spells this turn. Probably should have kicked it. So I was thinking we're just going to play another fairy anyway. But our opponent, in theory, they didn't have a counter last turn, right? But they could, in theory, draw a counter this turn and then counter the second fairy on the way down. So there's probably there's really no reason not to not to kick it there just to be safe. So opponent's going to attack down the to fairy. The one ring is good at protecting us, does not protect our planeswalkers, unfortunately. <laughs> Although I guess actually overall, that's probably fortunately if that also gave <laughs> could you imagine if the one ring gave all your stuff protection too? <laughs> everything protection for it's already so incredibly busted as it is if it gave all your stuff protection oh my god that card well opponent does kill the fairy well let's see how punished we get because of this if our opponent actually topped a, a counter this turn and they counter the second to fairy that would be a self-inflicted wound because we could have definitely just kicked that orm's chant we also got to keep in mind, we've used two Worms Chance. We have two more, one in our hand, one in our deck. If we want to set up the lock, which we do, we got to make sure we save at least one of them. Well, take damage from the One Ring, then draw with the One Ring. Another One Ring. Well, let's keep, let's keep drawing. One Ring number two, Leyline Binding, Prismatic Ending. Ha. Huh. To fairy. They can't have that many counters left in their deck, can they? I feel like they've used, well, they use three counter spells, Snapcaster, two Force of Negations, a Spell Snare. They gotta be pretty close to abusing every counter that they have access to. It's gotta be close to that, but it looks like they have something. Oh man. Oh, if this gets countered, it's so bad because we could have kicked the orbs yet. Okay, Brain Surge, yup. Gonna do some digging, trying to find another counter. We could Orbs Chant in response, so they can't cast what they draw, but I think we're getting to the, we need to save our Orbs Chants for times when they're really impactful part of the game, especially after using that last one pretty aggressively. We need, we need to make sure we have one for the log. We will find a scepter eventually. All right, opponent, draw some cards, put some back. Did you find a counter? Oh, they did. All right, force negation on to fairy. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just keep one ringing. We have so many one rings here. Get rid of the old one and might as well draw a card. Another ley line binding. Ley line binding costs what, two at the moment? Cause we don't have the salt eye triome. Are we gonna discard Kahira after all this? <laughs> we put, <laughs> we spent three mana to put Kahira in our hand like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> We never actually bothered to cast it <laughs> and then drew so many cards with the one ring we discarded the hands the life of a companion the life of a companion see that's why I don't even bother to put it in hand most of the time I guess maybe we should just run it out at some point just to like have a body existing on the battlefield opponent temporal mastery I, we got it we gotta try it again right we gotta we only have one orms chant left after this but fizzling an extra turn spell is just too good uh, Orms Chant, you can't cast spells this turn? <laughs> it resolves. It resolves. It is pretty funny how good Orms Chant is against Miracles. <laughs> Found it, gets in. Take zero because of the One Ring. I think our opponent forgot that we have a fresh One Ring going. Untap. Well, now we need to find another chant and a scepter. Uh, let's crack this. We have, I believe, one more fetchable land. Yeah, Zagath Triumph. Well, that makes our lane lane bindings cost one, which is nice. Draw some cards. Well, there's the scepter, now that we spent our chant. Let's just Supreme Verdict, I think. We have a ton of removal at the moment. We still have another Supreme Verdict, double A line, double prismatic ending. So what do we need? So we want another Teferi, eventually a Karn, and the Orm's Chant to go with the Scepter. Those are kind of the pieces of the puzzle opponent. Solitude. We also need to be cautious of the fact that we are down to eight with a one ring on two. So we don't have an insane amount of life to work with so which means we might have to lay line binding the solitude just to uh not take three we've reached the part of the game where taking three is actually an issue opponent gamba attacks us well we will do a little ley line binding for a single mana get rid of the solitude also we can ley line binding ley line binding to get back the one ring we don't get protection but we can legend rule away a ring with a bunch of counters on it if we need to opponent finally finds a one ring. Hopefully we can keep them from drawing any cards with it. Opponent's gonna tap the one ring. Well, in response, opponent. Okay, counter spell number four. So we got through four counter spells, a snapcaster, two 
three force negations, two force negations, a spell snare. Our opponent might be out of counters now. They might actually be straight up zero counters left. We can also still answer. Oh, there's Karn. Karn answers the one ring too. We'll draw some cards. Oh, there's a chant. There's a chant. There's a chant and the Karn and a counter spell. Wait a minute. Do we do it? Are we going to lock him? We still need the Teferi to make it the full hard lock. And the only issue we have is we're getting to the point where we don't have any shots at it, right? Because we don't have many. This is our last copy of Orm's Jant. So if our opponent stops this one, we don't get to reassemble. I think we still do it, though. I mean, we have counter backup. Exile the Orm's Jant. One, two, three, and four. Karn the Great Creator. Shut down the one ring. Tutor with Karn. And we still have enough mana that we can chant and counter a spell. Is it time to, to Elixir of Immortality? It's almost time. I think first off we Pithy Needle to shut down the Hall of the Storm Giants, which would potentially be a lethal threat. We can survive a while with one ring shenanigans, but so shut that off so we don't have to worry about the creature land. Now we can start chanting on our opponent's upkeep. So no spells for you. In theory, we could stop the Hall of the Storm Giant with the Scepter Chant, but I like having an extra layer of protection just in case because we could get one shot. Like we're low enough on life that a single Hall of the Storm Giant attack just kills us. So I like having an extra layer of protection for this. And then next turn, I think is the Elixir turn because our opponent's probably thinking, oh, we're gonna we're gonna be able to mill him out. But if we if we if we can get the elixir of immortality, we can put an end to those shenanigans. Well, chant ya. No spells for you this turn, opponent. They also can't one ring because of the Karn and opponent. I had a little, uh, little moto, <laughs> little moto crashing issue. As you can see, now we're very far ahead on time because I, I don't know exactly what happened there. But uh, yes, opponent, Galvanic Discharge on our Karn. Uh, we kind of want this Karn. We need the Elixir of Immortality. Yeah, I think we have to counterspell this. The Elixir of Immortality is incredibly, incredibly important here. Like, I think that's the card that lets us win the game, honestly. So counterspell the Discharge to defend the Karn. Then the Channel Resolve. And then Karn gets Elixir. We gain life, shuffle everything back in. And then I think... We're to ferry away from it being GG at that point. I guess the only other thing we could theoretically need is a pithy needle effect on a Tuara. They could have a one of a Tuara that could bounce the scepter and get out from under the lock. So I guess that would be the next. If we get a two more tutor, uh, tutors with Karn, the second one would be for another pithy needle effect. Bono land passes. Well, one ring hits us down to three. Another scepter. Draw some cards. Well, Karn. Let's take the Elixir of Immortality. Play the Elixir of Immortality. <laughs> the classic. An opponent sees what's happening, scoops it up. Oh, man. That is some classic old school, like 10 years ago, control tactics. <laughs> the Elixir to gain five. Shuffle everything back in so you can't mill out before your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a game. I mean, in the end, it's the scepter that actually locked him out of the game with the Orms chat. It was a grind to get there. And now the issue for our opponent is, is a control mirror. They have under five minutes on the clock and we won game one. So they have to somehow, some way, win multiple matches in... <laughs> five minutes in a control mirror, which I just don't actually think is realistic. I don't think that's possible. Uh, we really don't want the Supreme Verdicts, so we'll bring in like some Worm Coils and Jank just to be able to take out the Supreme Verdicts, which are really bad. And on a game two, and I think the clock means, I don't know how we actually can lose this match. Let's see some turbo control. <laughs> Let's see the beat down. Let's see the beat down plan. What is your fastest draw? I don't know. Is there a way this deck can win in under five minutes? Our opponent's deck. We did not see a lot of threats. I guess the way they probably win is what? Like chaining together extra turn spells? Maybe they have an Entreat the Angels. I can see like a one of Entreat the Angels. I don't think Entreat's that bad of a finisher in a Miracle style deck. Opponent cracks and surveil land. Opponent untaps. Hall of the Storm Giants. I mean, Hall of the Storm Giants is technically a a fast clock. You just got to get up to seven mana before you use it. And we have Field of Ruin that we could find eventually. An opponent 
scoops it up and somehow, some way, we got a treasure chest. We actually finished this this week with a three two. Well, I gotta say, this deck worked better than I thought. <laughs> so all around, I played I played two leagues, went two three three two, which isn't insane, but it takes a lot of work to scepter lock someone these days. To scepter chant. Ooh, Letch March of the Ends. Okay, okay. Not a valuable hit, but the art's cool. And uh, Hour of Eternity, that card's horrible. At least we got some play points. Well, let's talk about that in the wrap up. So what did we learn this week about Scepter Chant in Modern? So overall, I played two leagues with the deck and my God, there were some long games in these leagues. First one I went two and three, second one I went three and two. So we ended with exactly a 50% win rate. Although I will say, I think the deck's slightly better than that because one of the losses was from timing out where we actually, I think would have won, but just just the opponent didn't scoop to the lock and eventually we ran out of time because we spent so much time locking our opponent out of the game, which is actually an issue with this deck. If our opponent doesn't scoop and we actually have to like scepter chant them for 40 turns and then get like an elixir of immortality from our sideboard to shuffle our graveyard in and do it for a few more turns, it is actually very possible to run out of time, especially since the foundation of the deck is basically a control deck, right? We need to play the control game in the early game where we're getting the lock set up. So that requires some thinking and planning and making sure you fetch the right land. So all this to say, the biggest issue with the deck isn't that the deck's bad, because it actually felt pretty good, it's that the deck is incredibly slow and is it's just gonna lead to these like 50 minute grind fest games where you're trying to like set up this lock and if you do, it's awesome and you win, but sometimes you set up the lock and still lose from running out of time. I will say, it's a lot harder to scepter chant lock people today than it was 10 or 20 years ago. Like answers like Passage and Atuara didn't re exist. There's so much flexible hate for artifacts. We saw like Flame of Ignore, which those kind of cards were just much less common. These like good main deck cards that also just blow up an artifact incidentally. So I do think the archetype is worse than it was back during its heyday, like 15, 20 years ago. But I also think that our deck today showed that the plan can definitely still work. If you look at our wins, most of them involve scepter chanting and some of them actually involve the full-on hard lock where we just had to like keep locking your opponent again and again and again until they realize what we're going on and finally scooped up the game so if you like really slow grindy games of magic you like the possibility of just hard locking your opponent out of ever casting a spell again out of ever attacking again scepter chant actually a really sweet but super slow option so anyway that's scepter chant that's been our deck for today thanks for watching everyone I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.